Oh, you see that teed up, baby? What's that? I said, Roy, you see what's teed up there? Yeah. <laughs> all right. I don't really uh, remember all that much of it. <laughs> Episode nine, Trilogy of Across Theater. We've got Roy Colsey in the mix coming at us. Coming to us from where? Where are you, where are you sitting there right now, Roy? Uh, Ridge, Ridgefield, Connecticut. Ridgefield, Connecticut. Beautiful. Roy is... Uh, you know, obviously not only legend. I think, Roy, you and I overlap by one year in the ML, I believe. Your last year was 2007, correct? Yes, that sounds right. Maybe I might – did we try – well, did we try and go to 2008 as well? Because we, we went – we had one, two, and we tried to go for the triple, and then – Yeah. We oh four, oh six, oh seven, right? And then 2008, we were the, the team with no home. Yeah, that's correct. And so I did play that as well. Yeah, we got, but, but I missed a couple flights. It was, it wasn't a great season. We lost to the pride in Portland. <laughs> people, people who are younger than 35 years old and not hard so lacrosse fans are like, what? None of that makes sense in lacrosse. Guys. That's true. This is both a no. compliment and a point of like spite, but you didn't make the Portland trip for whatever reason. And we lost. And I'm like convinced that if you had made that trip, if you that we would have beaten them, obviously, mm. and we wouldn't have been matched up with um, the Rattlers in the semis. If you remember that game, and we talked I do remember. ad nauseum on yeah. with our previous guest. Um, but yeah, so 08 was, was your last year. Right, right. That makes sense. Yeah. And now coaching running superstar still very involved yeah, yeah doing uh i think I, this is i mean this i don't think this season counts as far as being a high school coach i think it was my 11th it's either my 11th or my 12th season at richfield high school i want to say 12th and um and then you know just i'm just doing the box across stuff now and i do i still do some training some you know speed and agility and strength uh right in ridgefield i got my own my own space and um it's good. I got three boys. They keep me, you know, plenty busy and trying to maintain a little bit of balance, which obviously has gotten a lot easier lately. You know what, like, I loved about Roy, Mitch, and it's just encapsulated in this screenshot, is, like, if you just look over his, like, his right shoulder, you have, like, <laughs> this, like, autographed barrage jersey, this, like, you can kind of see this little vignette of, like, this Cuse picture some sort of award, but then a vacuum. There's just a vacuum in the room, and it's like, so the guy is like okay. the ultimate highs, but it's like, yeah, I got a vacuum in the room. I got no problem. I got a vacuum. Water storage, a bubbler. <laughs> this is the best view I could get. I, I'm, I, I don't know. You know, I tried to be over here. Look what happened. <laughs> <laughs> we had the glow, we had the, the, Holy Spirit, the light of the Holy Spirit was it's coming like through. This, stuff. Yeah, it's like this, like portrayal of this, just like you know, iconic, legendary player. And it's like, yeah, I vacuum. That's no problem. I got, I got. I'm not too, I'm not too good to vacuum. And here it is. Here's the vacuum in the shot. I think it comes. I think it comes down to just not having a professional screen presence. I just, I think that's going to pass me by. You know what I mean? I don't think I'm going to be big on. Any, any of that stuff. I wish I, I wish I could have if I had started earlier, maybe. But yeah, you're lucky I can get this done. This is coming from a guy, by the way, who has a banana in the background and a printer directly behind him. So, like, in terms of like, oh no, I'm way more. I, I was, and and some kind of lamp that I'm not sure where the hell that thing came from. Is it <laughs> one of those? Is it a fishing rod? Is it, is it a cooler? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll have you know that that's not a printer. That's a receiver and a record player, and that's the record above it. And I try to mix Come up. On. I try to mix Come up. On. I try to mix up the record for the guest, and I put I, I put the banana up there because you know you were always the top banana on the on the. <laughs> wow! wow. I've heard it the all. Of the banana. I've heard it all. You know, or, you know maybe the second banana. I don't know, but I just thought that you know a banana was just kind of fitting. Oh, right? You know. Oh God, I love you. I love you, Boyle. You know, it's like it's a, a little velvet underground. I know that's one of your favorites. You play them all the time with your boys and your wife. Uh, you know. You're, no, no, my favorite is my favorite is that that song that you brought on on the bus 
with the gunshots. I, I still, I will still play MIA, that actually occasionally. MIA paper planes. Ryan still. MIA paper that. planes. I will still play that and think of you. Well, so that's pretty we'll, funny, right? Get into it, Mitch. So we we've got our first game of the season. This is actually I think during the year when we were on the road. We played down at Virginia Beach, and we were all allowed to like contribute songs to the the playlist. It was like a. How many times did RB songs get vetoed on that on that contribution? I, no, I'm the big, I'm the big hit or miss guy. No, stop it, Mitch. I, totally, totally. <laughs> he comes up with some real winners, and then some that you're like, ah, I don't know. What do I say, right? Seven out of twelve. He's right on the edge. He's so, always been like that, right? He's right on the edge. Yeah. So. So I put on MIA paper planes. And this is like, and I'm not trying to just like, I was borderline hipster back then with the music taste, but, but, but it was before it like hit. And so it, it comes on and everybody in the locker room is like looking at each other. Like, like, what are, what are we doing? <laughs> this is like, this is a thing. Like we're getting pumped up to this. Like, and of course Mitch, like who put this on? And then the gunshots, gunshots firing, and people <laughs> going in the air. People are like doing it to each other, and just loving it, just the loving it. Fire. And then, like, fast forward like three months, and it's on like soundtracks for like Pineapple Express, you know that movie, and like it's like everywhere. This is the hip like, right here. You had knew it before. Uh, it was the garage, just like this, like yeah. this. Oh yeah. <laughs> How, anybody do the double gun salute uh, goal celebration during the game? Well, we're going to – let's get to some tape because yeah, I think Roy Kizzi has one of the more underrated and iconic goal celebrations. <laughs> it's an understated one, Mitch, but I think you'll, I think you'll like it. I think you'll like it. Oh, look at that. They got the Tommy Hilfiger sponsorship there. <laughs> yeah. Roy, who's in net for the uh, for the Outlaws there? Trevor Tierney. Tierney. Was this? Was this? Do you consider this the greatest game you've ever played? Oh, I mean, you know, it, it was it was just. I think it was one of those games where just you know everything went right. I mean, I was real quick. The fact that you hesitated was amazing. You're like, eh, actually, there's been some others. He's like, it's my sixth. I think it's seventh favorite. <laughs> I like just, the no, just the way that everything went down. You know, I mean, physically, I don't think I was capable of doing what I was able to do younger in my career. You know, when I was when I was in better physical shape. But I mean, just I think really that game is a testament to guys being willing to do their job. And I and I, you know, I didn't move nearly as well as I as I did. And I think the long stick was on Strebel most of the time. I could still shoot the ball. But, um, you know, just the way we moved the ball and shared the rock and, and guys knew where to be, I think that game is probably a reflection of all of us playing together for so long and obviously being really fired up and then, you know, just, just you know, sharing the ball. And I, I don't know, I, I thought about that um, recently, but that was, a, that was a pretty incredible game. But I think it really was much more of just a super unselfish group getting the ball to the guy that was open. I think they were leaving me open because they weren't scared of me maybe. Mitch, will you rewind to where he does that big box fake and then just buries one? If if we could find that, I mean, it's it just we'll just let this play time and time again. I'd be fine with that too. So, Roy, do you remember what you and I used to argue on about man up? Because we'd like call a play and then you just be yeah, like, I hey, remember. I'm just gonna play, play one on one with the goalie. Like I'm just it's this is me versus him right here. Mm. Like, you, you're. Let me, I mean, one of the funny things, Ryan, though, you know, you, you're, when you first came to the Barrage, what year was that? Oh, four. What was your first year? Oh, four. It was oh, four. So you didn't, you didn't waste any time, but we had been terrible prior to that, as, as you probably remember. And your skinny little ass comes into the locker room the first day and you're, you know, you've been billed as, you know, this genius lacrosse player with all this IQ and, for a guy from Syracuse, that meant nothing to me. I mean, we didn't, you know, we, we didn't know where the other team was sliding from. We didn't have a man up play. We never talked about settled offense. I mean, none of that shit mattered. And I can remember you speaking up pretty early in the season. I'm saying, who the hell is this young, you know, this kid, this, this, you know, 
ge boy genius as as you know and uh and and then you know obviously getting to know you and uh understanding you know what you were trying to do for the, for our guys and 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 obviously winning you know certainly helped that but i i'll never forget you know you coming in and, and your guidance and your leadership it was a, it was a a big part of us turning that around i mean I, you know i'm sure i've told you that before but i mean your the way that you conducted yourself as you were a rookie you know you think about being a rookie quarterback right what some of these guys are trying to do in the nfl i think that you played that role as well as anybody could possibly have done it to take us from the garbage right as we used to call ourselves the worst team in the league to to a, a champion in, in, in the same season that was, that was really impressive well my first game i bit my tongue for one game so you know roy that's about as long as i can go but when <laughs> So we, we lose to the Bayhawks in overtime. And we, like, had the game, like, firmly in our grasp. And it was like, you know, we're up, like, two with, like, a minute to go. It's like, whatever you do, no twos. And then, like, some knucklehead tries to, like, intercept, intercept the pass. They go down score two. We do some other stupid thing in, in overtime. And then Gary Gate, like, scores, like, one-handed, like, you know. And I'm like, oh. yeah. And, and I was just like, this is the dumbest team I've been on in a while. <laughs> and that was like well, after one game. And I was like, what? How did we just lose that game? We like, like, that was like, we clearly lost that game. And I was like, I know when you win a game versus lose a game, we just lost that game. You know what, though? One thing that's very interesting, and as you say that, you know, your mindset as a, as a, as a, player who was much younger than me, especially as far as, you know, where I was in the league and all those things. I had never really thought like that. I mean, obviously if you're up one goal with like 30 seconds left, you hold the ball. That was about the extent of our strategy. You know, we didn't, I don't think it went, it certainly didn't go much further than that at Syracuse. We just kept shooting. Yeah. You know, we didn't have to keep the box. There was, I mean, we just, we played from, from the first whistle to the last whistle without a hell of a lot of regard for, the score and the strategy involved. And as a coach now, when I think back, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm also, I'm 46 years old now and having coached for a long time, I, I wouldn't have wanted to play lacrosse with myself as a player just because I, I see myself a lot more the way, I see the game the way that you saw the game, except I'm 46 and at the time, what were you, 22? Yeah. When yeah. you came in? So yeah. your, you know, your background and where you came from and obviously playing for Coach T and Metsy and, and having all those great players around you, you guys played the game in, in a different way. And I would say that what led to the barrage being successful, because the reason that we weren't good in the years prior to you coming is because we were not the most talented team. We just weren't. We were okay, but yeah. we weren't the most talented team. But we didn't utilize our, our players to the best of our ability because nobody was really thinking like that. And I think between you and, and Tony Resch taking over, I'm not sure what year that was. Um, but the, that combination of 05, yeah. those two factors were huge in what we were able to build. I, I, I still don't think we were probably ever the most talented team, but we had the best chemistry and we had guys that were you know, willing to, to do, the, do their job. So is that Sweeney? What's up, Uncle Roy? <laughs> Hey, What's up, Sweens? How are you, my friend? So we have our, I saw that your screen, our first recurring. I saw your screen was sideways. I thought maybe it was it was it was uh, a streeble trying to figure out how to get in there. But now that you fixed it, I can see it's you. Uh, how are I you, did. buddy? Good. It's great to green, see you. It's been a long time. Green bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. You taught, you taught me well. So Kai was on, was that earlier this week or last week? It was all yeah, it was Monday. Yeah, it was Monday. And, and, and he's, now, he's now become part of the TLT team. <laughs> Strong-armed his way in, and he's in for good now. Oh, I love it. I love it. This means we just watched the, the uh, highlights of the 10-point uh, game against Denver. That was like, uh, what were we calling a fantasy camp for, uh, yeah. for the other guys? One it, was game. Just, it was easy. <laughs> Okay, right now, can you imitate off the top of your head Roy's goal celebration when he's feeling it? Do you have a mental image, and can you physically give a a, a little bit? Well, one of my favorite ones is 
I think it might have been his fifth goal in that championship. He sticks it from – if it wasn't two-point range, it was somewhere in that vicinity. And normally you turn, celebrate with your teammates, whatever. No, he walked directly towards Trevor and was, like, pointing at Trevor. Like, I don't know what you said to him at that point, Roy, but you, you, I'm sure you weren't saying, oh, I'm sorry, buddy. Like, I don't know what you said to him. But. I remember that. I remember that. Wow. It's, that's what it is, Mitch. That's what it is. It's this little shirt <laughs> Wait, you said you don't you don't remember it, Roy? It's 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 clear as day on on the highlights. You're like walk, you're like you make your way towards towards yeah. Trevor to let him know. Yeah, that was five. I no. got one more for you later. Kyle, I I didn't say I didn't do it. I just said that I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get in a video too. Now that we have uh, now that we have Kyle here as well, I'll get in a video too. What was what was it like playing for for Coach Simmons? Uh, I mean, you know, to this to this day, he was probably the all time favorite man that I ever played for. <clears throat> he just he just got it. He just understood, you know, how to motivate players. He understood what he was looking for recruiting wise. Um, the X's and the O's I never felt like were were terribly important to him. Yeah. He had the best athletes. Uh, and he let us play and he supported us. And, and, you know, as long as we got the job done, um, you know, he, he didn't, he didn't get involved at all really on, on the field. The one thing I would say about him, he knew what he was looking for. You know, he, he understood exactly what type of human being he wanted on his team. And I think our practices were ridiculously intense and, you know, he could put 10 guys on the field that would absolutely die to win. And I, and, I, and I think, you know, to this day, that's probably the, the, the thing that made our teams then so, so successful. You bring up a good point. I think, you know, I played for Tambroni at Cornell. I think he talks a lot about that, like our, guy, our kind of guys, recruiting our kind of guys. Like I can figure out X's and O's and skills, but like if I get the right guys in, I feel like I can get them, you know, where I want them to be. It's interesting because I feel like Tierney, and, and I don't know Coach Yurik as well, but I feel like Tierney was less so like that. But maybe there was elements of that culture piece. But I feel like he was very more a tactician with Tierney. If I'm, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ryan. Uh, well, I mean, we could talk about Yurik and Tierney another time. I want to I want to honor our guest here, and and if we're going to have a recurring guest who, uh, Sweens, what is the more underrated part of Roy's game? Oh, real quick, that goal lefty, right there. Real lefty, quick, that lefty, I was going to say, or that goal right feeding, there. Go ahead. Or his feeding. Well, well, feeding was good, and except the time he got you killed. But that lefty goal right there, Roy. Do you remember how we won the semifinals in '07? No. <laughs> okay. You don't, sweetie. Does it's the best. So, so Roy. So I'll just I'll, I actually told this story on Monday Night Show. So. <laughs> For whatever reason, the kid Casey Cittadino, you probably don't even remember who he is, but Casey the Cittadino was like barking at you all day. And oh, no, I, don't I remember that part. That was the game. Yeah. So then the end of the game, like we, we would, Andy wins, I think Andy wins a, wins a draw. I pick the ball up. We go on the offense and like timeout. So, you know, we all, the, we get our offensive personnel on. Um, I feel pretty confident that Roy had, or that um, Strebel, the play was set to go to Strebel. And you're just like, no, I'm all set. And you just you dodge right to left on Citadino and put the, that exact goal that we're watching right there against whoever I think it's North Carolina you're playing there. That exact goal, it's identical. And then the best part about it, who cares about the goal? Who cares that we went to the championship? Any of the above? We're in the we're in the handshake line and we walk by the kid and you're like, um, hey, I told you it was coming. Just like very politely, like, hey, I told you it was coming, and like shook his hand, just kept moving on. <laughs> you had no problem, like. It was. It was. He, he started that with me on the wing on the at the very beginning of that game. He he started in like I, I'm I'm like an old grumpy dog at that point. Like if you just left me alone, I'm not going to bite you. Like just just play defense, keep your mouth shut. Maybe I'll have a goal, but I, I probably am not going to want to prove myself at that point. And he starts chirping about how he's going to shut me down. And you know, this is like in the in the very beginning of the game. I told him, I go, dude. You're, you're out of your mind. I go, who are you? I, I remember asking him. I never, I never even heard your name before. <clears throat> and, then, and then it's just, you know, I was, I was getting after him pretty good all game. But to, to Ryan's original question, I would say that was the most underrated part of your game because 
And I think, I think you got the reputation of being a strong right-handed player because you had such success in the box game. So people automatically assumed, oh, well, he's like, you know, the Americans that do well in the box game for the most part are predominantly one-handed. So I think people thought, oh, Roy can't go left, Roy can't go left. But you proved that obviously in this video here and then the semifinals. I think that's where people would they'd overplay you to your right and then you would get yourself to the left and you'd have a, you'd have an alley and be able to put it that bouncer on the run left hand that was pretty was pretty lethal. And it was really, you know what? It was, it was not smooth. Sorry, Roy. It was not it was unworthy. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, I, I would I, I would say the the one thing that I tell kids to this day is that I don't think you need to have a lot of different types of shots with your offhand, but you better have one. And and I had always worked hard at being able to sweep lefty and shoot over him and put it on the you know the bottom right hand corner of the goal against a righty goalie. That, that's going in a lot. And 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 I think you know that's where I I didn't spend a shitload of time working on my left hand. I just knew that that particular move I had to have that in, in my back pocket in order to be successful. I think that's how I looked at it. And, Maybe, Ryan, you know, to your point, maybe that's why it's not the, the smoothest uh, release of all time. But, I mean, it was, it was really just a tool. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't for style. Well, yeah. speaking of style here, I got to ask, what is going on <laughs> out of the back of the helmet here? I, I think that's coming back again, man. That was, uh, that was a little bit longer in the back than it was every place else but it was it was pretty long everywhere it wasn't it wasn't quite a rat tail but it, it's damn close <laughs> like a side kind of thing or was it just like a like a like, a, like you were just, years ahead of joe you know, exotic there I'm, in, I'm embarrassed to admit this to you guys but i'll, I'll tell you patrick swayze and point break that was about <laughs> the time and I was 100% wanted to be Patrick Swayze in Point Break. I can't, I can't lie to you guys. That's the truth. That was my inspiration. Yeah, as I saw that movie, I never cut my hair again. Yeah, no, no, no shame there. All, like, absolutely. I mean, that's the greatest thing I've ever heard, though. That's amazing. And when you were, <laughs> he was the man. You were barraged your whole career, right? You, you were one now no. the entire way. Yeah, I, I was really fortunate. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> we had a couple of tough years, and our, our chemistry was insane. I just, you know, I mean, to, we still have this text chain, which I, I sometimes desperately want to remove myself from because I, mean, I go to bed normally, 9.30, 10 o'clock is late, and they just, the texts just keep coming, and we have some characters on there. Every once in a while, boil it's you, 11 o'clock, sending somebody a text, but you know, I'll, I'll answer my phone in the morning. I ha I'll go to bed at night. I'll have zero texts. I'll wake up. There'll be 57 texts that happened between the time I went to bed and I got up. But it's that type of, of chemistry, I think, that, um, and that was so probably the most Roy, important. And 45 is not a – Yeah, exactly. So, Roy, I got, a great <laughs> I got a great question for you, which is related. It's right on the heels of this. So, I've never understood it, and, and, I, and the only – thing that ever gave me a slight insight of understanding the Syracuse chemistry was being on the barrage. And here's what I mean by that. Is so when we, were, when we were on the barrage, we had a, such a wide array, different cast of characters. We had BJ Prager, Princeton Wall Street banker. We had Mike Springer, this, this gorilla from, from Syracuse that could shoot the ball hundred miles an hour. And they were best friends on the team. We had Joe Seglia, we had Matt Strebel, right? And everyone would get along. So that was my, the only time I ever really got a good vibe of how a bunch of different people would work together. But with Syracuse specifically, everyone I've, that I'm really close with from Syracuse, they, they have really interesting stories, but don't go into detail about that dynamic and how we didn't really have to be friends. We just had to gel and play well together. Do you have anything you'd want to add to that or like, or, or any specific stories you think that would highlight what I'm talking about? Well, I mean, we, we, so when I was at Syracuse, we, we were in the final four, you know, all, all four years. We, we played in the championship three years. We lost to Princeton in overtime, and we won twice. And then the most talented team out of all four of those years, we lost to Virginia. That was my junior year when Dom Finn and Charlie Lockwood were both seniors. We were all in the same midfield line. We couldn't share the ball. 
and and I would say that that was probably one of the main reasons that we that we didn't go further. I mean, not that the semifinals was a bad place to stop, but um, I don't know that the chemistry at Syracuse was. Um, I I don't I don't want to disparage the the Syracuse chemistry, but I would tell you that I I've never been on a team with chemistry like the barrage. It, that was very different. Um, mm -hmm. I think at Syracuse, we were all super talented and we all loved to win and we tolerated each other. I think that's a, a better representation of the relationships where there was a, a tolerance that we did, that we had a lot more small clicks within the Syracuse teams that I knew. And, you know, to this day, my closest friends are, you know, five of my Syracuse teammates and not 20 of them. And we have never, ever had a text chain or, or really been interested in having, you know, too much dialogue as a group. And then you look at our barrage team. And I think the success of our barrage team, Kyle, we were talking about it before you jumped on, just, you know, that, that team was probably not the most talented team in, in, the, in the MLL in, in the years that we won championships. But there's, there's no doubt that we had a cast of characters that got along really well and were really, really willing to do any job necessary. Some guys being willing to do, to do smaller jobs than maybe they were capable of in order for the team to win. And, and, and I don't know if I'll ever see that again. I can tell you when I coach now, I'm searching for that type of mindset and that chemistry. And I'm looking to bring guys in and, and, and you know, if I could have my guys feel a 10th of what we felt as teammates on the barrage, we're going to be pretty successful. Yeah. A good example of that, which is, this is a good little stat. Not many people know this. So prior to about 2005, I think maybe 2006, there was no first team. There was no all American for long stick committee. Any long stick committees had to be, they were classified as midfielders. So right. um, th there's very few first team long stick midfielders ever. The first one I am familiar with is um, I I'm pretty sure Seggs is the first ever, but Seggs was a first team no. all American. Am I, no, I the first wrong? guy, the first, yeah, well, I only know because it's another Yorktown guy. The first guy to ever be oh, named Maddie Dwan, first team Maddie Dwan, all American right? was Matty Dwan. Matty was Dwan, Dwan, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah and, sorry, then, sorry. and then I think Seg was the very next year or two years yeah. after that. But that's yeah. right. Matty took one so, of the All-American slots. So perfect example is this guy who, who earned first-team All-American as a long stick, which is you know, relatively unprecedented back then. He came onto that team and was like, yeah, I'll play short stick. Sure. And that was, just, that was just Seg's thing. He's like, all right, well, you're telling me I get to play here and we're going to win and we're going to enjoy it? All right, cool. I'll do it. So – he was one of many guys that I felt like just did whatever, whatever Tony asked to do. Yeah, hundred percent. And, and, and it, we, I think we all kind of supported that, which I, you know, it, it we had such a, and you know what the guys that did that weren't willing to do that, they were left or traded. Right. Yeah. Well, you mentioned Yorktown. So an alien lands and you've got to explain Yorktown to that alien, <laughs> and you can only present one person. Oh, so you just, wow. you just like, he, I'm going to explain Yorktown, and here is the archetype. Oh, man. Well, I, I tell you what, I'm going to, I, I give you, there are three guys in the running. Let me give you the three guys that are in the running. The first is Rob Dorr. Remember Robbie Dorr, who played with us? Of course, I, Ooh, I was, was on a, that team. I was he, terrified. He was, was a barrage, well, let me, let he was me a barrage guy for a minute, right? Like a like he was, six he games. Was, he was there my first game. My first game, I came in halfway through the season because I had a broken ankle. So they, I, you know, I come in and I was terrified of him. He's a grown man. He's a New York. Wasn't he a cop? Right, New York City cop or something. Cop like in that. the city, yeah. Yeah, yep. so New York City cop. I'm some 22 year old nerd from Georgetown that's working. That shows up in a suit to the first game, and he was like, literally, he was like, "Who the fuck are you?" And I was like, uh, "Hi, I'm here for the game." <laughs> you know? I was like, "All right." It's <laughs> so, like terrible, terrible. And I brought a long pole too, so he saw that he was like not having that. You know the way that works in that no. league. It's like you see somebody yeah. else show up that might play your position. That's basically 
he's about to eat your paycheck, you know? So he was like, all right, right. I don't like you right off the bat. So, yeah, he's, ter- a, he's a tough son of a bitch. Yes. So he, he would be if, – if he, he's one of them. The other guy that you guys may know is a guy named Adam Lodwick. You guys know Lodi, played at Maryland. His brother works he's, for me, Drew. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, But Lodi is – you know, you talk about the prototypical Yorktown guy that still lives in, lives in Yorktown. And then uh, Vinny D'Andrea, who's Rocco and Anthony D'Andrea's – a uh, younger brother, and he played at Hobart, and he moved back to Yorktown. I don't think you can even qualify if you don't move back to Yorktown or coach in Yorktown. So Rob Doerr is still a coach there, and and both Vinny and and uh, Adam Ludwig live across the street from each other in the same neighborhood that uh, v- Vinny grew up in, and they they'll they'll always be in Yorktown. Like, I mean, look at me. I couldn't wait to get out. I love Yorktown, but I wasn't going to live there for the rest of my life. Yeah. yeah, that's a that's a lacrosse tree that extends far, the Yorktown tree. I mean, and deep and recent, and it's it's pretty wild. Yeah, it's awesome. How about some How about some quick some quick hitters here? What uh, What's your favorite favorite place all time to play? Oh, I don't I don't know if I, I you know we with the barrage you'd think that I have one that was we would remember but you know it seemed like every other year we were transferred or the game that we went out and played in LA was was pretty cool the the championship out in LA I I thought that was cool um that was a year before I started I believe it was out there yeah just just I mean but for that was just the experience of being out there I thought that was cool um didn't we play didn't we play in in uh in in Dallas Cowboys Stadium at one time I I think I still remember remember some in shenanigans fr- in the lock. Tony Romo's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we put we played it. We played in front of all twenty people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, my favorite place of all time probably is the Carrier Dome. I, I you know, I was surprised that didn't come out right away. What are your thoughts on the? Yeah, movie? I'm thinking. I'm you know, I'm thinking of 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 um, the pro stuff. I mean, the dome was the dome was incredible. It, it's, it's definitely an advantage there, you know, for sure. Okay. Real quick question for the other three, you know, the non Q's guy here. Did any of us win in the in the dome? I know I did not. I was over five. So two for two? No way. Awful. We lost both at home against Q's and we won both in the dome. Wow. There's not, not a lot of people can say that. I mean, not you know. That's impressive. Wow. There's a great video. This Max Seaball, his uh, I guess it was his freshman or sophomore year, dove across the crease like cleared the cre- like almost like a crease dive but cleared the crease and scored on Panarelli to win it and either if it wasn't overtime with like three seconds left wow Mitch we have those o- we have those 04 highlights we have one more uh... oh, you know what I, I think I had to I had to drop them for space I could pull it up on YouTube no we're good ask me a couple more questions you Mitch you got, you got a couple more you wanted to ask yeah how about uh, favorite teammate Favorite teammate over all the years? Oh, God. That's an unfair question. Put him on the spot. Yeah, I couldn't I – don't, I don't think I could do that. I could, I could tell you that by far my favorite team was the Barrage, hands down, and I played on a lot of teams. Um, hey, Sweeney. And I could tell you – Can I break Sweeney's heart? When, when we told Roy that there was going to be a special guest, he asked if it was going to be Screeds. <laughs> I it's thought okay. for sure it was Screeds. It's okay. I'm Strabel, sorry that you joined though. Strabel's been, Strabel's been sleeping, sleeping and or reading for a while. So. I got a, yeah, I got a, yeah, yeah. It was a bad guess with 8.30 start time. It was a, that was a bad guess on my part. When, um, okay. We might need Sweeney for historical reference here, but when did the moniker, when did the nickname Uncle Roy come into play? And, and I, I don't I don't want to say that I gave it to him, but I feel like I did. And and here and here's why. So <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> you don't say. Well, well, here here's I'm why. So, a so specific question. Real quick, uh, Rory, I can't believe you left out Harbor Yards on one of your favorite places to play. Really? A place, you know. I'm I'm it, kidding. Funny I, I, I'm kidding. I know. Oh, go ahead. But it was, it was, I have a lot of memories of, of that, I think, because of, of it was basically the first year that we were playing in the MLL. 
and mm -hmm. it felt like it was going to be so good, and then it wasn't. Suddenly, it wasn't. <laughs> so, I, mean, you might, I think you might have been the first guy to coin that. So, well, so oh. here's what happened. So, so I was on the team. I was 22. It was the last year of the of the Bridgeport team, and you had your first child. Do you remember that? It was, so it would have been you had. I guess that would have been Ryan, right? Is your oldest? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, or, or maybe I guess so. Um, I was. I don't know. I don't know why or how or whatever made me. Do, I was like, hey, so is there some sort of baby gift we need to get? So of course, as the rookie on the team, they're like, yeah, well, you get it, and you know, we'll all give you money. Yeah. So somehow they were fucking around. They were like. Um, are you related to Roy? Is Roy your uncle? And I was like, well, I don't know. I mean, he's this older guy. I'm 22. So it was just kind of like Uncle Roy. And then it just went from there. And then there's so many other I, – I, without – you guys, you, guys, you guys gave me the, the baby bag. Yeah, exactly. The Vera Bradley baby I, bag. I remember Good that. Good memory. Yeah, was, yeah. I, I got it on 40, 42nd and 2nd Avenue in the city. Yeah, I left work, went over, got it, and went up. Yeah. It was great. And that actually got some mileage, man. I, I, I remember that. I remember probably a lot of gifts, but I remember when I came home with it, you know, my wife was really touched. She thought yeah. that was really sweet. So that, to this day, I'll probably always remember, you know, that team and, and, you know, winning the championship. Literally, you know, Ryan was born August 17th of 2004. And um, I think the championship was the 19th maybe or the or the yeah, it was like right one after. day later yeah he had just been born i literally kissed my wife i jumped in the car and i think i think it was i think it might have been the next day that we were playing crazy all right so, so yes yeah, so I, I don't yeah i guess maybe that's the origin of it i'm not sure but i do remember there's one other thing i wanted to say because we're adding i never we don't really talk ever so is i just like most athletes i probably played one, I definitely played one year longer than I should, maybe two, depend, you know, depends on who you're asking. And um, I just remember, because I think when you, what was the last year you played? You were 36, 37, something like that? Yeah, 30, probably 36. It was 2008. Okay. And so my last year I was 37 and it was tough as hell. Man. I, I was working. I had three children. My wife was working. So she, and I'm just running around, leaving, never sleeping, leaving after every game. Get young guys are telling me, oh, stay, hang out, drink. I'm like, go fuck yourself and get in the red eye, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. Wow, this, this episode. <laughs> <laughs> remembering back the people who I time I appreciated and, and I don't think anybody gets it until you've done it and it took me literally until I did it to truly appreciate what you were doing for example like in the 07 finals when we had no idea whether you were going to show up for the semifinals and you showed up five minutes before came out had a coffee walked out scored the first goal of the game was just my dogs won the Super Bowl it was really, really hard. And I just, anyway, I, it's just a credit to all the work. It's a credit to the fact that you could show up and still ball out the way you did at that time. Because when I was finally that age, I couldn't do it. I did not do it as well. Your job, your job is more, infinitely more difficult than catching the ball and shooting it and scoring. So I'll say that that's definitely true. But I did not want to play in 2008. I mean, I was, I was done. I was emotionally done. I was, I was physically done. I, I, I didn't, I didn't want to leave my family anymore. I, you know, I was tired of traveling on the weekends. And then, you know, the, the piece that no matter how you try to do it, you, you're trying to also stay in shape to play, you know, at the time, those were the best players in the world playing lacrosse. And, and as you get to be that age, you, you kind of still need your, physical ability and it's and it's dwindling as it is just because of age and then on top of that you've got all these responsibilities it it was a lot to juggle so i i definitely knew i knew going in it was i was it was a year that i shouldn't play but we had gone back to back and i love the guys and i couldn't i couldn't imagine not trying to go for it but i i definitely didn't want to and i knew m minute one that it was a bad idea <laughs> and we were that we were there too if you remember casey put the ball in a 
hole that big. Otherwise, we would have won. All right, Roy. Yeah, well, well, we were talking your nemesis? about that. Your on-field nemesis. Uh, Jay Jalbert. That's a good one. Real good one. Uh, most yeah, Jay, Jay, Jay and I. So this is a pretty funny story. So Jay, Jay and I went at it. You know, you, you talk about a guy that would have been a great teammate for me at Syracuse. I mean, he was – Every bit as as ornery, as tough, uh, as much of a competitor, and we I, we hated each other. And any chance either one of us got to knock the other one down or slash or whatever, we would. We talked at each other twenty four seven. We both make the U.S. national team, and we go to training camp in Syracuse, and and I and I still hate him. I mean, I, you know, given given the opportunity, I'm going to go after him in practice right the next day and I'm sure it's the same way for him and I was a little bit late and I check in and I go to my apartment and we're, we're staying in the dorms where we had stayed when we were players and who did they give me as a roommate it was Jay Jalbert so I walk in the door of the condo pretty comfortable this is Syracuse I know where I am and there's Jay Jalbert waiting you know he had just dropped his shit and walked in and, and uh turned out to be that we got along you know a lot better than we had prior to that and I have a, a ton of respect for him, but that's a guy I wish had, had been able to play longer. Is he had you know a bunch of head injuries, and and uh, he was phenomenal. He was a, he was a great player that maybe a lot of guys, you know, younger guys won't remember or know, but he was a phenomenal midfielder. He'd be. Do you remember, be, do you remember when he'd be a great future guest? He's got some great highlights out. There. Do you remember? Do you remember your fight with him at Mitchell Field, Roy? Mm, no. <laughs> was it after a down ball or something? I, I can't it remember was, anything, Kyle. I, I don't. It was right in front. Well, so I, these were all of the th times when I was like young and impressionable. It was, it was either my rookie year or my. I think it must have been my rookie year, and um, you guys were scrapping in front of the in front of the crease. Doc was involved in the barking, and then you know because the MLL is so professional, you go to the penalty box and you sit five feet away from each other, yeah. <laughs> and. And there's some poor guy who's working for free in between, you know, I'm over here at 22 years old, like looking at these grown men, like, are they going to kill each other over there? And they're just, you two are just barking at each other. And some old guy saying, uh, take your helmet off for the camera. <laughs> it was great. It was really, I remember it so vividly, but. This apparently, Roy, you made a big impact on uh, on Sweeney's twenty second year of life here. <laughs> I know, I, you know Absolutely. I wish, I wish everybody. I wish everybody met me at twenty two when I was a, an old vet. You know, that's 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 pretty cool. That's pretty well, here, cool. Here's a question for you then: When you first when you first came out of college and you were playing, I guess there was no ML at that time. But was there anyone that you who were the people you looked up to that you tried to? model your career after because I, I have several in my personal lacrosse career things were so different man I, I think the MLL started and I was 27 years old you know I had played I had played club lacrosse but that was a really diluted talent pool um and as a matter of fact we won the the club championship and I don't remember which team we played from Maryland it might have been the green turtle but Craig Kastnick was in goal and I had like one of those championship games, like were like seven or eight or nine goals. I'm not sure what I said to Tierney, what I did or didn't say, but I can tell you that I was all over Quint in that game. It was, it was on a dirt field, no grass. I'll, I'll never ever forget that we won the championship with the New York Athletic Club, and um, the guys that I looked up to were the best lacrosse players. But we didn't get to know each other because it was really that was just a go in, play at one or two o'clock. And I wasn't, I wasn't a big drinker, you know, stay around after. And, and so I would usually leave and not really get to know them. I, I always, um, you know, got a, got a real kick out of, of Gary Gate, his, his ability as a, as a, I couldn't emulate him. I just wasn't, you know, I didn't have the same skill set that he had, but I, I loved his game and the way he played and how tough he was. Um, Pat McCabe was always a guy that I really admired and looked up to. He was, a few years older than me. He was four years older than me. He's probably and and uh, Sal Lacasio, who was who was a goalie, um, you know, early in my career, and then a coach. Another guy that was just you know phenomenal, just a real professional. But if I had to say one guy, probably it was Pat McCabe. I just to me, he was like 
he was almost like a Derek Jeter of the Yankees for Syracuse, in my mind, the way he led. He was a winner. He was successful. He was, you know, he always did the right thing. You're never going to hear anything bad about him. Well, that, that kind of is perfect segue into like the last, the, the, you know, last question we could go all night here, but um, yeah, who, who, you know, it doesn't have to be a player. Who's, who would you consider the most influential person on your lacrosse career? Hmm. That's, I mean, you know, um, there's so many stages of, of your, of your career. You know, I mean, I, I don't think, um, you know, without, without this guy, Charlie Murphy in Yorktown starting lacrosse and opening his house to us, I, I don't think I would have had the same passion that I had for the game. I, I truly loved the game of lacrosse because of what he, Hey, sorry, my dog is uh, going crazy on the carpet. Um, the, the way that he, opened his house and, and really loved lacrosse. I mean, you know, I can remember being out playing in his yard and college coaches after a game would call and tell him what the score was. And while we were out there shooting the lacrosse ball and playing with a bunch of other Yorktown guys in his yard, we'd hear the window open, we'd all stop talking, we'd stop shooting, and then he'd call out what the score was, you know. Syracuse, 18, Army, 4, you know. And then he closed it. He closed it again. We'd be like, "Oh no, shit, arm!" You know, Syracuse whooped arm. And then, you know, not not long after, he he'd open the window again. And it would be the Rutgers score, and then it would be the North Carolina score. And there was no internet, so we were we were getting information at the time that we didn't know that nobody else had it. But literally, that was like the wire, you know. And here we are. So I, I think that that was probably shaped me the most. Um, the guy that gave me the most confidence and, and inspired me as a player was Coach Simmons. I, he always um, – the one thing I would take away from, from him was just the way that he believed in me and supported me and, and um, you know, allowed me to be the player that I, that I wanted to be. Uh, I, I, don't, I have had very few coaches that were so willing to just let me be and, and let me play lacrosse my way. I, 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 um, I, I think that probably helped me become uh, the best player that I could be. <clears throat> Well, that's, I think that's a, a fitting way to end uh, an awesome interview with, with you know, an all-time Syracuse legend. So we really appreciate you hanging, Roy, and hopefully uh, it was just, this was fun for you. Yeah, man, I loved it. Great to see you guys. Sweeney, always good to see you, man. It's been a long Miss time. Miss you, buddy. Absolutely. We, Miss you. We can, we can Zoom without taping this, man. This, is, this, is, this isn't the worst thing in the whole world, right? These, these have never know, ended absolutely. when I hit the top recording, just for the yeah. record. We hit the <laughs>